I'm currently doing my PhD in Biological Sciences at Auburn University in United States. So today I am supposed to answer some of frequently asked questions regarding this pandemic and the virus which causes this pandemic. So before going to answer those questions, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about this virus name. Though some people call it coronavirus, uh, it's not technically right. We should call it SARS-CoV-2 and that's its actual name because coronavirus means a family or a group of viruses. Um, just for an example, I can tell you that uh, HIV and HDLV, HIV, you know, HIV is the virus which causes AIDS, and HDLV, um, which causes the T-cell leukemia. So these, these two viruses are retroviruses, um, uh, but we, we, don't, we cannot tell them uh, like altogether that if someone is um, uh, infected with HIV, we, can, we, just, we just don't tell that he's affected with retroviruses. We should, we should specify the name. So in this case, uh, we should specify the name SARS-CoV-2, um, though a lot of people call it coronavirus because newspapers, in media, in television. So these questions here, um, which came to me, they all uh, call it SARS-CoV-2 as just coronavirus. So I am going to use the term coronavirus. So um, I'm just like clarifying this uh, fact because uh, my research is actually um, on um, virology so as a scientist as a student of science i have i think i should clarify the facts to you guys so uh, let's start uh, so the first question was why and how does coronavirus change in different geological reasons so firstly we have to know why the change so um, and uh, what we call them. So uh, every virus has actually, basically they have two um, basic uh, things uh, in their structure. So one is their genetic material, uh, genetic material like DNA or RNA, and another is uh, their, their capsid, we call it, uh, because it's, it's just a cover of the virus so it's made by protein and so uh, when the genetic material or in viruses genes there is some changes uh, for for which the virus sometimes behave um, differently um, as it was supposed to uh, so um, then we call it uh, it's a variation or a kind of mutation so uh, variants of viruses occur when there is a change or mutation to the virus's genes. So, uh, as you know, this, this virus which causes this pandemic is an RNA virus, so it's a little bit like more, um, uh, uh, more uh, tending to change. Uh, it's kind of in RNA viruses, this tendency is a little bit more frequent. So it's the nature of RNA viruses, such as these viruses, these viruses to evolve and change gradually. Um, geographic uh, separation tends to result in genetically distinct variants. So uh, mutations in viruses, including the coronaviruses causing the COVID-19 pandemic, are uh, neither new nor unexpected. Um, RNA virus is muted over time, sometimes more than others. So for example, flu viruses change often, which is why doctors recommend that you get a new flu vaccine or flu shot every year. So that's how um, coronavirus change in different geological reasons. So the next question is, the next question is, um, um, whether the new strain, especially which is in India, uh, more dangerous or not. So to answer these questions, I must say that, I mean, you cannot tell that um, when there is a mutation, you cannot tell that exactly 
little bit more dangerous or not or I mean uh, there's other um, questions here that what do you mean by dangerous is an ambiguous term so let me tell you this that when the variants emerge some of their mutations may enable the virus to spread faster from person to person and more infections can result in more people getting very sick or dying. So there is preliminary evidence that some variants could be associated with more severe disease. Therefore, it's very important for us to expand the number of genetic sequencing studies to keep track of these variants. So, uh, the scientists uh, have studied this uh, ex this specific strain or the, uh, the, the Delta variant, which uh, uh, has which has been which has emerged in India. So they say uh, so the study has shown has have shown that the spike protein mm, uh, we call it the spike protein of the virus. I mean, uh, let me tell you that what the spike spike protein is. Though a spike protein is a is, is located on the uh, on the capsid uh, of the virus and it helps the virus to bind the to bind to the host cells so the spike protein mutations make the delta variant kind of fastest and fittest variant yet so uh, it may be more advantageous for a respiratory virus to evolve so that it spreads more easily. So this coronavirus is also a respiratory virus because it um, uh, more frequently uh, infects cells of our respiratory system. So on the other hand, mutations that make a virus more deadly may not give the virus an opportunity to spread efficiently, right? So. If we get too sick or die quickly from a particular virus, the virus has less opportunity to infect others. So, however, more infections from a faster spreading variant will lead to more deaths. So, we cannot say uh, exactly that it's kind of dangerous, like obviously it should be dangerous or not, but uh, it's kind of um, a diverse situation for a virus which has a mutation. So I think um, I can explain this topic to you um, clearly. So another question uh, another questions is um, how geography affects the coronavirus to transmit, uh, transmit more effectively or how weather affect coronavirus to transfer, transmit more eff efficiently mm, or not? I mean, is there any kind of um, impact of geography and weather to this coronavirus um, trans, um, transmission uh, process or not? So uh, I must say that it's a no. Uh, there is currently no conclusive evidence that either weather or climate have a strong influence or transmission. Uh, so uh, by saying weather, uh, I mean that uh, short-term variations in meteorological conditions, and when I say climate, it means the long-term variations. So uh, it's, a, it's a no, you uh, cannot say conclusively that obviously in this geographic region, uh, peop uh, peop like coronavirus is kind of Transmit, transmit, getting transmitted like more easily, and that region transmitter, they, they, they transmit really slow. No, we cannot say something like that. Um, so they, this is also that's also a reason why we shouldn't tell this virus, uh, uh, Chinese virus or not like something like that because the virus it just get emerged from some region. So we shouldn't uh, specify any country. Uh, for that right so that's another thing so um, there's another question here so that is is artificial still appropriate for new strains so my question is my the, the answer is yes um, because um, when you say uh, when uh, I say like RT-PCR uh, that that 
particular process actually they focuses some certain part of genetic materials of the viruses when they check it in the sample that is there any that specific part in the gene is uh, uh, present is is existed in that uh, particular sample or not? So RT-PCR is a kind of gold standard for this type of taste. But uh, if you say some other uh, taste like them, some some rapid uh, kit test or some antibody test, um, maybe it it takes um, less time to do this test. But those are not the standards. So sometimes those in those tests you can see more frequent. Uh, um, uh, uh, false or manipulative results. So we should um, depend on RT-PCR um, diagnostics and uh, yes, it's still appropriate even to the newest trends. So the one last question here is um, mismatch of vaccines will make any harm or not? So this question arise because I guess uh, there's a lot of countries like uh, Bangladesh too that um, we don't have our enough vaccine supply for the people. So sometimes we just kind of like mixing uh, from one company's vaccines as a first dose and another company's vaccine as a second dose or something like that. But uh, typically, if you get a COVID-19 vaccine, that requires two doses, you should get two of the same vaccine. Um, there's not an enough, there's not enough studies about uh, like this mismatching of vaccines because generally people don't or the doctors don't suggest or don't recommend that. So two Pfizer short or two Moderna short or two Oxford or AstraZeneca, whatever shorts, um, you should go to like the same company's shorts. So not one and then the other, but in the future, maybe this could change, um, but we cannot uh, say that right now because every company has a different approach to design the vaccines, to product uh, the um, to product, product the vaccines uh, uh, materials, uh, so to produce the vaccines materials. So. Maybe in future that could change either by necessity or by design, but till now, um, everyone recommends also, I'm not, although I'm not a doctor, but I also recommend two doses. If there is two doses, you should go for the same vaccines, not different brands. So I think I have answered all the questions and it was really meeting you. It, it was really nice meeting you all and uh, um, always be careful in this current pandemic, uh, always wear masks and uh, maintain the, um, maintain the um, social distancing. Um, uh, I think that's it. Um, have a good uh, have a good time and uh, best of luck for all of your endeavors.